Hello viewers, this is Wagada Ronald taking you through today's tutorial on gravitation and gravitational constant. So gravitation is a mutual attraction between two bodies because of their masses. So if we have one body of mass M1 and another one of mass M2, by virtue of their masses, there will be an attraction between the two. Now this force due to gravitation is called gravitational force and it is different from gravity. Remember gravity is defined as the pull of the earth due to gravitation between the earth and the object. So it is different because this one is between any two objects but gravity is between the earth and one object and that force is vertically downwards. Why? Because it is towards the center of the earth and that force is known as weight of the body. So if the body is of mass m, this force will be equal to mg, where g is the acceleration due to gravity. So Newton's law of gravitation. It states that every body in the universe attracts the other with a force that is directly proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the masses. So if there are two bodies, one of mass M1 and another one of mass M2, and these bodies are separated by a distance R, then the gravitational force will be proportional, this force will be proportional to the product of their masses, that is M1 times M2, divided by R squared, because of the R squared is inversely proportional according to Newton's law. So F is, is proportional to M1 times M2 over R. That is what Newton's law states. But this force is not easily noticed between two bodies of ordinary masses in daily life. Why? They have a very small value of a gravitational constant and therefore the force between ordinary bodies of ordinary masses is small. Hence, their acceleration is too small to cause any noticeable motion. The only acceleration that is noticeable is the acceleration due to gravity G. And why? Because the Earth is relatively has a higher mass. So we shall now go to gravitational constant. Gravitational constant from Newton's law, this is to remove this proportionality sign, we have to put there an equal sign with a constant of proportionality. Now that constant of proportionality is what we call gravitational constant and it's numerically equal to F. If M1 is 1 kilogram, M2 is also 1 kilogram and R is 1 meter, then F will be equal to G numerically. What does that mean? It means that gravitational constant is equal to the force of attraction between two bodies, each of mass 1 kilogram and lying at a distance of 1 meter apart. Now this gravitational constant is usually denoted by a letter G, capital G, and in L-level physics we shall take it as 6.67 exponent negative 11. And the SI unit is in Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. So we shall use this formula to go through the solution to this problem. The distance between Earth and Moon is 3.84 exponent 8 meters. At what point between the Earth and the Moon is the net gravitational force equal to zero? Take the mass of the Earth as 6 exponent 24 kilograms and the mass of the Moon as 7.73 exponent 22 kilograms. So Moon is here, Earth is here. They want the point where the net gravitational force is zero. So let that point be P so that is at a distance R1 from the moon and a distance R2 from the earth. So at that point, the gravitational force between M1 and M, so we consider a particle of mass M1 at that point. So that the gravitational force between this particle M1 and this one will be equal to gravitational force between the, between the mass of the earth and that very particle. So from the formula we know that the product of the masses divided by the square of the distance apart 
time was the gravitational constant will give you the gravitational force. So this is the gravitational force for these two bodies, particle one, particle and the moon. And this is the gravitational force for the particle and the earth. So we shall make R1 the subject. When we make R1 the subject, we shall get this. Substitute, we shall get R1 in terms of R2. But we know that the distance between them is R. So if it is R, it means that when you add R1 plus R2, you'll be able to get R, which is the distance between them. And it was given as 3.84 exponent 8 meters. So we substitute for R1 to get one to get 0 0.113 R2 plus R2. So in the end, we shall come up with your R2 as 3.449 exponent 8 meters. Now that you have got R2, you can easily get R1 from this formula. Make it around the subject, you'll be able to get 3 point R1, R, which is 3.84 exponent 8 minus R2, which is 3.449 exponent 8. In the end, you'll come up with 3.91 exponent 7 meters. So that will be the point where there will be zero gravitational force. So that's how they use the formula for gravitational force. And now we are going to go through an experiment used to determine the gravitational constant capital G. So the setup is as shown below. A capital A and capital B are identical large gold spheres and small a and small b are also identical small gold spheres. So this is a high, highly polished bar CD. And this is a torsion wire with a torsion constant k per radians. And this chamber is a drought-free chamber, same to this drought-free chamber. And these are fine quartz strings. So two identical gold spheres, A and B, small a and small b, each of mass small m, are suspended from the ends of a highly polished bar, CD of length L. So these are the small spheres A, small a and small b, suspended from highly polished bar, CD of length L. So distance from here tier is small l. Two large spheres, capital A and capital B, each of mass capital M, are brought in positions near spheres A and B. Just as you have seen here, capital A is brought near small a and capital B is brought near small b. The angle through which the bar is deflected is measured by a lamp and scale method. And the distance D between the spheres A, small a and capital A, O, small b and capital B is also measured and recorded. Now remember these are two bodies we each with a mass and by the law of, by gravitation because of their masses there should be an attraction between them and that attraction is due to gravitational force. So there will be an attraction between this capital, capital A and small a masses and also an attraction between small b and capital B masses. And because they are identical the attraction will be the same. That is why you can either measure the distance between a small a and small b or the distance between small b and capital B. So how is that attraction seen? Let us try to illustrate it in this way. So this is the area of view for example. If I, I look at this experiment from above, this is what I'm going to see. So this will be a, this will be b, and this will be capital A, this will be capital now, because of the, the masses, there will be an attraction between these two and also an attraction between these two. So, in other words, these small masses will tend to move towards these big masses. So, A will tend to move this side and B will tend to move this side. At the point of equilibrium, where, whereby the torque of these small masses is equal to the restoring torque of the torsion wire, then you will be able to measure the distance between the two. So this will be the distance between small small b and capital B and also the distance, distance between small a and capital A. So call that distance small d and that's what they wanted you to measure. Now after measuring it, then you have to calculate gravitational constant. So this is the distance small d, distance small d. You also measure the deflection theta or the of the bar, which is that. 
Now from there we shall know that at equilibrium the torque of the couple on the bath CD is equal to the restoring torque of the torsion wire. Remember we said the torsion wire has a torsion constant of k per radians. So if the deflection is theta radians, then the total restoring torque will be equal to k theta. For this one, for the bar, it will be capital F multiplied by L. And that will be the torque or the moment of the couple. So, but we know that this F is due to gravitation. Therefore, gravita from the formula of gravitational force, it will be G multiplied by the product of the two masses. If you take, for example, C, these masses of A, the bigger mass is capital M and the smaller one is small m. So therefore, the product of the masses will be capital M times small m over the distance apart. The distance apart is small d, so we shall put there small d squared multiplied by L, which is the length of the bar. It will be equal to the restoring torque, which is k theta. So from there, when you make give the subject, you come up with this formula. So that is what our interest. Therefore, after measuring all those ones, you'll come back and calculate the gravitational constant, which is required from the formula this, which you have already derived here. So that is how they determine gravitational constant. And that brings us to the end of our lesson. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to my channel, ROA, a learning platform.